How's it going Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be diagnosing a riding lawnmower's electrical charging system. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So in the shop today, I have a Troy built TB30R riding lawnmower made by MTD. So this Troy built is going to be the same as the Cub Cadet CC30 and the Columbia CR30 riding lawnmowers. Again, these are the rear engine ones that MTD produced to pretty much compete with Snapper's smaller residential riding lawnmowers. Now this came into the shop just for a basic service. So I went ahead and did oil change and oil filter, fuel filter, spark plug, air filter, scraped up the mower deck, sharpened and balanced the blade. This thing starts and runs awesome. However, my customer did mention to me that the battery doesn't seem like it's charging and he occasionally has to charge it himself to keep it fully charged. Now this mower, just like pretty much any other riding lawnmower with a battery and an electric starter has what's known as an alternator that will charge the battery as you run your engine. Now an alternator on a riding lawnmower works very similar to that of a vehicle. However, unlike your car or truck's alternator that's belt driven, the alternator on a riding lawnmower engine is located under the flywheel. Now you guys may be aware that on a flywheel, there is going to be a large magnet. And as the magnet passes the magneto or the coil, it sends electrical current down the high tension lead or the spark plug wire to your spark plug. But there is also going to be magnets located on the inside of the flywheel as well. So as your flywheel spins around, those magnets are going to be rotating around your engine's alternator. And that's going to be the big copper winding that you see pictured on screen now. Now, not every riding lawnmower's alternator is going to work in the same way. There may be some slight differences, but for this particular 420 cc engine, and this is a power mower, this alternator is known as a dual phase. So it does have AC and DC output, meaning it has alternating current and direct current. So you have to imagine that every time you turn the key, you're using a little bit of the charge from your riding lawnmower's battery to rotate the starter to turn your flywheel to get your engine started. Now on this particular battery, you guys can see here some wires coming out. So my customer has hooked up just a couple wires that go to the battery terminals for just a trickle charger, an external one. So when he's done cutting his lawn, he drives this into his shed and his shed is powered and he has a trickle charger sitting right there on the shelf. And he says that basically when he's done cutting, he just plugs the trickle charger into this. He doesn't have to hook it up directly to the battery because again, these little cables go directly to the terminals and that's how he's been charging his battery. However, I did tell him that once I finished servicing his machine, I would just have a brief look at it and do some basic tests to figure out what the issue is and then give him an idea of how much it would be to repair it uh, if he wants to go that route. Now, whenever you're dealing with an electrical issue or you're doing any kind of tests, you always wanna start with the battery and establish what's known as a baseline. So I have just a cheap multimeter here. You guys can see that I've selected DC 20 volts. So we're testing anything under 20 volts DC, that's direct current. And you guys can see here that we have 12.29 volts. So this battery, even though it's a large 370 cranking amp battery, which is more than enough for this small single cylinder engine, this battery is showing low voltage. And again, that's because I have been starting it, driving it around just to do basic testing, get the oil warm, and then uh, obviously make sure that it was uh, fully functional once I finished my service. But basically what you guys wanna understand is that anything under 12.75 is generally going to be a battery that's losing its charge. And just to show you guys, I have hooked the positive and negative leads from my multimeter up to the battery terminals. Now, the second step in testing to see if your riding lawnmower's alternator is properly charging your battery, you're going to leave your multimeter hooked up to the battery. We're going to leave the multimeter on 20 volts DC. You're gonna fire up the engine, put it to full RPM, and you're gonna run it and you're going to look to see if your voltage increases. Now, it may not increase fully right away. However, you should see the battery's voltage slowly increasing. So for an example, using this machine here, we had a baseline of 12.29 volts. So once we fire up the machine, we should see it go to 12.3, 12.4, 12.5, et cetera. 
However, before I fire this engine up, I just wanted to point out that on this particular riding lawnmower, the mower's exhaust is located directly where I'm going to be testing. So what I have is just some extension test leads here. So it's a big loom and I can pull these out and basically I can bring myself to another location uh, more ahead of the engine's exhaust there so that I'm not breathing in the fumes because we are going to be coming back to this area in a moment to do some further tests. All right, so the charger's all hooked up. I'll go ahead and fire this thing up. So you guys saw that when I fired it up, the voltage initially dropped because again, the starter put a load on the battery and then the alternator was not charging the battery. You guys should have seen that go up to like 13 volts slowly, but surely it should have raised itself. We're currently sitting at around 12.23 and uh, it's basically just sitting there. So again, we're down from our initial baseline of 12.29 volts. All right, so my multimeter leads have been disconnected from the battery, and at this point, I'm going to be taking you guys through a very quick and simple procedure to identify whether or not we have a bad alternator or a bad voltage regulator, which is going to be that black box right there. And essentially, the way this works is, again, flywheel spins, alternator sends down electrical current to charge the battery. However, the voltage that the alternator creates needs to be regulated to a specific amount. And on a lot of riding lawnmowers, it could be like 14, 15, or 16 volts. Basically, it just ensures that your battery is not being overcharged. And that is the job of this right here. This is your voltage rectifier or regulator. So what we're going to be doing is coming down to the connector and we're just gonna wiggle that and unplug that right there. Now on the back of this connector, you're going to see a purple wire and a red wire. And if we roll this around, you're going to see a red wire and a white wire. Now, here's the thing. The two red wires come directly from the alternator and then that purple wire right there goes back through your riding lawnmower's wiring harness and gets back into the battery. We've already established the baseline was 12.29 volts, it was low. Then we started the machine and let it run and the battery was clearly not charging and the voltage dropped to approximately 12.23 volts. So at this point, we're going to come back to our multimeter here. And once again, we're going to turn it to 20 volts DC. So we're testing direct current under 20 volts. And my red lead here, these are very nice because they have a longer tip to them. And you could back probe your connector, but for the purpose of this test, we can actually just unplug the connector itself. And what we're going to be doing is putting the probe into the purple wire. So what we're going to be doing is testing the connection between the voltage regulator's purple wire, that's the outgoing wire, back into the loom. So just to get you guys a shot here, purple wire, and then we're going to take our black lead here and I'm going to press it to the ground terminal on the battery. We have nothing and then as soon as I touch it, we have 12.25 volts. So that means that the purple wire going from the voltage regulator to the battery is fine. So now what we can do is I'll show you how to test on the red wires. And then basically we're going to be doing an alternator test and we're gonna to have to run the engine for that. So again, I might use my extension leads because uh, you know, once again, the muffler's there. What we're going to be testing next is going to be the red wires. It doesn't matter which one we're testing. We're going to test both of them. So basically uh, just pick one. And what you're going to do is either probe this end here or back probe it. So I will be testing the red wire next to the purple one. I've plugged in my red connector there. However, you'll remember that I mentioned this is a dual phase alternator. So not only does it have a DC output, but it has an AC output as well. That's gonna be alternating current. So while we were testing DC for the battery and the purple wire, we are now going to be testing AC. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is come over to your multimeter and then you're going to select AC. And on mine, you guys can see that the lowest it goes is 200, which means we're going to be testing anything under 200 volts 
AC for alternating current. We're now going to be testing the alternator's AC output to see if it's sending current to the voltage regulator. Now, in order to test this, we need to run the engine. And it's very important that we run this engine at high RPM at around 3,300 RPM. That will ensure that the alternator is at its highest output capacity. And for your negative lead here, you're just going to be hooking it up to a good ground source. So I'm going to be using the battery's negative post there. Okay, so I have everything set up. Now, I don't wanna talk while the engine's running because obviously you won't be able to hear me too good. So what we're going to be looking at on the multimeter readout is going to be anywhere from eight and a half to 10 10 volts AC and you're going to want to have that at both of the red wires that we test. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up and see what we have. And just to show you guys that the multimeter is working properly, I've just taken an extension cord here and you guys can see we are testing under 200 volts AC and there's a 120 volt circuit right there, right out of the extension cord and we're testing at 119.7 and it's fluctuating a little bit. So because we were only getting 0.1, that is going to be a fail on our first red wire coming from the alternator. So now just to show you guys, I've flipped this over and I'm testing the red wire that's next to the white wire now. Once again, I'll fire up the engine, let it run at full RPM, and you know, we should see eight and a half to 10 volts AC. Okay, so we've tested both our red wires coming from the alternator. We've tested it at AC for alternating current, and on both tests, we had 0, 0 0.1. So we have well below our recommended spec of eight and a half to 10 volts AC. So don't forget to shut off your multimeter there. And now, basically we've done a process of elimination. We tested DC circuit, the purple wire going from the battery, is okay to the connector there. And basically we know that the alternator is not sending current down to the voltage regulator. Now, if we had voltage, let's say eight and a half or 10 volts AC from the alternator at those red wires, and again, you know that the purple wire is good that goes into the wiring harness back to the battery, then that would have been a process of elimination and we could have then replaced our voltage regulator. So at this point, it appears that the alternator is simply defective and not working properly. However, there could be two issues with this riding lawnmower. Now, the first one is going to be what's known as a rotor failure. Now, this is extremely rare. And what that means is it's a demagnetization of the magnets on the inside of the flywheel. So you could imagine that the flywheel's spinning around, but because the magnets are demagnetized, they are not affecting the alternator whatsoever. Now you can test that very easily by simply taking a piece of steel and then holding it up to the magnets. And if the magnets don't attract the steel, then obviously you know that the magnets are demagnetized, at which point you can just replace the flywheel. However, if the magnets attract the steel, then that means that the magnets are fine and you have an alternator issue, in which case you can't fix it, you just have to replace it. However, with either of those two issues, whether it be a flywheel replacement or the alternator replacement itself, you're getting into a fairly expensive bill because there's quite a bit of stuff that has to be removed from the rear of the machine, obviously this plastic cover, but then there's also going to be the top of the engine cover. And unfortunately, they build these engines farther back in behind uh, this piece of plastic here that it makes it a little difficult to get in and access certain bolts and screws. So the labor on this would most likely outweigh the cost of the parts. And like I said, if we had alternating current at those red wires, you know everything else is good. You simply go ahead and replace your voltage regulator and that's just one bolt and that thing comes right off. Now I will put part numbers up on screen the voltage regulator, the part number, I believe is a 951-12242. You guys can see it listed there. And then the alternator there is going to be a 951-12224. You guys can see that up on screen now. So whatever the case may be, 
my customer said he doesn't want to spend any more money than he has to on this machine and he's perfectly fine with just plugging in his battery charger. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Like I said, quick and simple test to determine whether the alternator or the voltage regulator is working properly. In this case, the alternator simply just wasn't sending alternating current down to the voltage regulator itself. And as I had mentioned, my customer doesn't really want to spend the money to repair this when he can simply plug in his external battery charger when he's done cutting the grass. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.